Hi, my name is Noor Hosseini and I'm a data scientist at Tipco and I'm here to teach you how to get the most out of using Team Studio. So in Team Studio, you might have noticed a tab called Touch Points in the menu, uh, the main menu on the left hand side. Touch Points are meant to be a place where someone, maybe um, a business user or someone who's not so interested in creating a workflow variables and may just want to select certain information and have inform some data just surface to them immediately and uh, apparently. So what you could do is create touch points for them to be able to interact with. So in this view of the touch points, you can see all the touch points that have been created for this uh, particular instance. I'm gonna walk you through this one called homeowner segmentation to show high value clients by city. So first things first, how is this touch point even come into existence? Well, there is a workflow which is looking at property data. And in this workflow, you can see information like the different properties and what their value is, the LTV ratio, that's the loan to value ratio, um, where they're located, various different ways of looking at the location, like the zip, city, etc. And this information is um, clean and put through different types of aggregations so that uh, someone would be able to just see which of the cities have the most high value clients and um, their distribution as well. So before you can create a touch point, any parameters that might be of interest to use in that touch point must be defined in your workflow variables. If you go to actions at the top, you can see your workflow variables uh, from the drop down menu. And it is here that we are defining two extra variables that we need. The first one is the LVT. So this is the loan to value ratio. This would define how much of the uh, property would be uh, taken under a loan. And the property prop value would refer to a property value. So this would be something like how expensive the actual property is itself. Now, once you've defined those variables, if you close the workflow, you will be able to create the touch point within this view. So you're not in the canvas, you're just outside of the workflow um, here. So if you see work file actions, you click on create touch point, you'll be able to do it there. You can also view the touch point usage as well. Okay. So if we are looking at the touch point, how do we configure this touch point? How do we create this touch point? I'm going to walk you through how this homeowner one has been uh, prepared. So first, the workflow that we just saw is the one that is um, configured to work with this touch point. The details that are specific to the workflow. So this is just a little bit more information about um, the description. So from before, uh, as, as we saw, the user can see a description of what exactly the touch point is showing, right? So in this case, we're going to show them the high value clients by city. The run settings, the next tab, will just say whether the person has to be, um, whether the account has to be uh, run by the person who's logged in or it has to be run by the person who owns the actual uh, workflow. And also the output to display talks about the different operators here. So for example, um, which of the operators we're essentially wanting to surface. In this case, we've chosen to show the cities with the most high value clients. And let me just show you how that looks like unselected. So when it's selected, the touch points highlights, uh, it comes up blue as the things that will um, be sort of used to show to the business user. We've also shown the high value clients by city. So we're going to have two views, which is essentially um, a kind of filtering process, as well as a frequency distribution. Finally, the inputs, those are the workflow variables that we defined previously. And um, so these are referring to what we mentioned that the property value has to be specified, uh, what it must be greater than in this case. Um, and then the workflow variable. So this is the loan to value ratio in this case as well. The description sometimes helps. So in this case, you know that the currency for the property value is USD, whereas the loan to value ratio is between zero and 100. So the ratio is from zero to 100 itself. And you can also add more parameters 
Um, but again, they have to be defined as workflow variables that will then be surfaced similarly to the others. Okay. And then finally, you can put in the information directly here, test it as well. I'm going to show you how it looks like from the view um, from the view of the user when they are just looking at the touch point. So let's say we're interested in property values that are greater than, let me just see, 10, 1, 2, 3. Of course, this is 1 million. Let's say we're interested in property values that are greater than 1,500, uh, 1.5 million, sorry. And the loan to value ratio must be less than. So this would be people who would have substantial amounts of cash and only need to take out a slightly smaller mortgage. Let's run this. And we can see that there are actual um, cities that we can identify. So this is a great way to know maybe where to target, um, what to be looking at in terms of uh, the, the places to be focusing the efforts to find those high value clients. You can also see the distribution between them, right? So um, the Huntington Beach region is, and the Irvine region seem to be some of the more, and, and the, um, Newport Beach region seem to be considerably more promising than the uh, other regions when it comes to looking for a high value um, clients in the city. So that's how to use touch points. Thanks for watching.